Yesterday morning's court hearing for civil and criminal matters had a slight change to people's expectation from previous hearings. Most cases presiding over civil matters were heard in chambers and most expected to resume in the af into the afternoon in chambers as well. Presiding Judge Honorable Wilson Isaac advised the public gallery matters pertaining to family interests should be heard in chambers due to their sensitive nature. Although one ongoing land matter in Hikutamaki that made headlines previously has also changed as an application for compensation was ruled by Judge Isaac to be heard during a rehearing of the land matters in the land court through the week. However, this morning the case appeared before Honorable Judge Isaac. During the hearing, the compensation application for Matapa was withdrawn. Five cases of a cust child custody resumed back in the courtrooms today but was closed to the public, also due to sensitive issues. The only cases expected to cause a stir in the open court of the civil sitting is that of Honorable Tungia Sionihalo, who had filed an application against Speaker of the House, Honorable Auhiba Levy, and Honorable Tokitalangi, as well as another application against Honorable Tokitalangi, Honorable Billy Talangi, and Honorable Dalton Tangilangi. These cases were advised by Judge Isaac for written submission from government by the 23rd of November, and Honorable Tungia Sioniholo to respond by the 2nd of December before Judge Isaac can make a decision. We'll bring you more on that news bulletin in our future news. The continuation of the most highly sensitive case in the criminal court this morning that was not completed yesterday has now been adjourned again to tomorrow morning as the defendant's lawyers requested a review of witness statements and to confer with their clients. The cases against four defendants submitted before Judge Wilson Isaac was for assault, willful mischief to property, bodily harm and oral threats to kill or do bodily harm had allegedly stemmed from the result of the general election in Hikutawake when it erupted into violence. It is expected that the police will call 21 witnesses to, for their accounts of the incident in Hikutawake on election night. However, the case only heard two witnesses late afternoon yesterday before court adjourned this morning, but no hearing took place as the defendant's lawyers asked Judge Wilson Isaac for an adjournment to review the statements of witnesses. The case will continue tomorrow morning. Private sector development continues to increase to the delight of many as new Chamber of Commerce established $300,000 worth of funding to expand or start new businesses. According to business advisor Elliot Curtin, the idea behind the initiative to introduce a funding mechanism for people to apply to is development of the private sector and the island. I think most of the businesses that apply will probably look, traditionally um, from my previous experience, they generally will probably look between about the ten to $20,000, mm -hmm. um, with occasionally getting a smaller one and occasionally getting a, a much larger one. Mm -hmm. um, but most businesses need some capital. Often, it's, if it's new business, often they need some um, some capital funding to help buy the equipment they need to get up and running. Um, for some existing businesses, it's often about having some funding to help them take that next step forward. Um, and that might be some working capital as well. It's designed to um, grow the private sector. So it's not um, competing with um, New A Development Bank, but it's to get new additional businesses up and running where they might not have the security to currently get a loan. Um, and to get existing businesses to expand. So um, it should complement the funding that's already there, but um, finance, is, finance is one of the key um, restrictions, things that stops the business from starting. Mm. And um, so far since you put out the advertisement, has there been any response from the public? <laughs> um, a lot of response. So um, a lot of businesses came and talked to the Chamber about a year ago when it was first um, talked about that there was going to be funding, and... Um, and since I've been here, I've seen a number of them. But in the last, um, I think it went out on yesterday. <laughs> so in the last um, day or so, um, yeah, there's a lot more interest. People wanting to find out, people want to talk, 
kind of through what their ideas are. And for us, it's um, very much about talking with them about their ideas and then helping them take it through to um, doing some business planning. Elliot said there are a few things people need to do and your Chamber of Commerce can assist with the process. I suppose um, for a commercial bank, and, and to be honest, you know, for the development bank, they have to make sure they get repaid. So they're looking for security that's greater than the money lent so that they know if anything goes wrong, they can still recoup their funding. Um, we'll be able to take a little more risk than that, and that's what the funding was designed to do. Um, it's designed to actually help those people that don't have the security, they don't have the land or the, the house or, um, or whatever, and so they don't have the assets, so if they don't, can't really go to the bank and ask for that funding. With us, what we'll look at is we'll look at, will the business succeed? Do we think the business will work? Does Nui need the business um, to be started? And if all of that is kind of a yes, then that business will probably get funded, even if they don't have you know, the assets or security for it. We won't require that. Now, do you, do you have any concerns at all? Um, from, obviously, you would have received reports from how businesses or a lot of businesses happen or develop through the years here in Niue. Um, and not just businesses. You look at the government projects, you know, the funding is finished in the first couple of years or yep. first year, yep. and it stops. Are you concerned about that at all, that that might happen? Um, yeah, I've seen it, I've, and I've also seen it right through the Pacific. I, um, I think if we can actually... The challenge, one of the challenges for Nui will be getting people to think about being in business, and I think this first stage is getting um, increasing people's understanding of what it is to run a business. Um, and if we can get increase the number of people that want to be in business, we'll increase naturally um, grow the number of the private sector. Um, it's interesting. We're surveying our businesses at the moment, so we're surveying all the businesses actually on the island, and um, and a lot of the barriers to them growing aren't actually finance is one of them but you know labor is a huge issue for them at the moment um internet you know there's there's a list of reasons why they're actually struggling to grow what you know why they can't actually um meet the objectives that they want so um it's not just about finance though finance is an important one but i think it's about having all those other parts of the economy that have to actually be addressed at the same time and so what we're trying to do is identify what they are and then we can work out, from a private sector point of view, how do we go about addressing them. Um, and the truth is a lot of them have to be addressed by government, and, but by the private sector working with government to address to work through them. Now, obviously, this um, initiative will be welcomed by a lot of people, especially those who struggled, as you said, to meet uh, some of the criteria from the banks, whether it's development or commercial bank. Yeah. Um, now, what, um, uh, what do they... Uh, initially have to come up with because a lot of the the loans that happen either you come up with some sort of a deposit or um, a percentage of what it is that you need to repay or yeah a depositor yeah um, I suppose the key for us is a business plan so we'll actually as a chamber we'll sit down with people help them write out a business plan and um, and it's an important part of working out whether it's viable whether the business is going to make money um, that's the key for us, that the deposits, um, all those other elements of it are quite flexible for us um, because probably no business fits a standard model. So, you know, every person that comes and sees us will be a bit different. Some would have some money for a deposit, some wouldn't. Some, um, you know, they all have different individual needs. So our, the goal of our fund is to be really flexible so we can help the business be profitable. That's all it's about. So um, if required, that, you know, so often that might mean a deposit. Sometimes it may actually mean we don't require a deposit. Another program Elliot and his team have established for new government is the Youth Employment Scheme, which is expected to employ 30 students to assist businesses through the Christmas period, as well as the Employment Attachment Scheme to help businesses take on a new employee. Niwe is about to develop a policy that will look at mainstreaming gender issues. Niwe does not currently have a specific policy on women and there are no formalised process processes for taking gender issues into account. But with assistance from the Secretariat of the Pacific Community, a gender policy will be developed that will hopefully address these issues. An individual from SBC is on the island for two weeks to gauge what issues arise in trying to develop Niwe's very first gender policy. 
This week's talks and meetings are in progress. That is a good start to working on drafting the policy that will be further discussed. We'll bring you more on this news bulletin in our future news items. The One Day on Earth UN initiative has gained momentum with the first event held in 2010. 101010 10, 10 was a digital contribution towards the world time capsule. Taking a play on the palindrome 111111, 11, 11, a challenge was put out to individuals or groups worldwide to produce short videos capturing a story of one day on Earth. The challenge being that everything was to be filmed on the 11th day of the 11th month of 2011. So last Friday, 11 young and enthusiastic Niwayans took up the challenge to produce a contribution with a newer twist towards the One Day on Earth initiative. The concept was to get 11 people to do 11 things on the 11th day of the 11th month of 2011. A range of activities had the group up at the crack of dawn to the marketplace for breakfast raising the flag at the police station, witnessing New York Primary School, Friday morning assembly that had a Christmas vibe to it, cycling to the wharf, a short song and dance routine at the airport field, trekking down to Tongo, tree planting at Uluvehi, an excursion to Palaha Cave, a short stop in New York High School, sneak peek at Las Vegas night and finally dinner at Talos to wrap up what was an enthusiast, exhausting but fun day on the rock. The Poly Rockers would like to thank all who supported this epic adventure, especially New Year Tourism, and hope for more hype for their next and final campaign next year. The group have one month to complete and submit their video to www.onedayonearth.org. And to end our news bulletin for tonight, Niue Rugby Union has selected 14 players and three officials to represent Niue in the Oceania Furu Cup to play in Papua New Guinea. The 14 players will join 11 players in New Zealand next week to travel with management to Papua New Guinea. A representative from Niue Rugby Union said they are looking forward to the tournament that Niue won in 2008. New Rugby Sevens team is also getting ready to depart this week for the IRB Gold Coast Tournament. They will face tough competition straight off as they face well-known international ranking teams. Set to be highlight for Team Niue, they will face the might of World Sevens champion New Zealand, Fiji and Kenya in Pool A. The tough competition is set to give Team Niue a good run but one representative from NIU said the team can only do their best. We wish them all the best in Brisbane as well as in B&G. That's our news bulletin for this evening. Good night.